All right. Well, thank you all for your patience tonight. We apologize for getting started a little late. We do need to take a few minutes and conduct a public hearing on the taxable general obligation pension refunding bonds, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Deichel to do an explanation of what all that means. Okay. Um, what we're asking permission, or we're holding a public hearing right now to refinance $14 million of, of uh, pension bonds. By doing this, it's just like refinancing your house. Interest rates are really low. What we'll end up doing is dropping our principal payment and interest payment by $75,000 per year. But by refinancing, we'll also be able to recoup about $900,000 in extra money. Net will be about $700,000, $725,000 that we can then use for construction without raising any taxes. So that's basically what we're doing. Any questions from the board? Yeah, no, Tom, that, that money, this, this is for the pension Correct. money. Okay, so that money comes back here. Can it not be used in any other way besides the uh, 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 construction process? Sure, it could be used can, to can pay go down general fund money. No, it can go <laughs> to uh, pay down the debt. Debt service. Yeah, mm -hmm. debt service. Okay. Now there's some money up there in the bond fund, uh, the retirement bond fund uh, that's still floating around there. Does that have any effect on it? No. That money. How can that money be used? That could be used to pay for retirements, uh, a buyout program, things of that nature. Has to be used for retirement options. That has to be used that way. Right. Okay. Yeah, we couldn't take that money and bring it back into the general fund. And we also are incorporating uh, a, a hearing on an additional appropriation to the general fund and rainy day fund. Correct. On the rainy day fund, we're asking permission to. Uh, appropriate 3.5 million which is basically everything that we have in the rainy day fund because we're sure we're still not sure how close we're going to end the end of the year we've already appropriated 2.3 million uh, but I told the board I would come back towards the end of the year I'm still unsure as far as where we're going to be at the impact money that we were supposed to get to the tune of about 800,000 is not going to come through so the end of the year should be very very close so I just think we ought to just reappropriate the whole amount and that will give us the flexibility to take as much money as I need at the last minute. And then the general fund allocation is um, we had money in a holding in and out type account and uh, there's about 300000 in there that we're going to bring back to the general fund. It's been sitting there over many years. We've been audited. Uh, and written up because of it, because we don't know where exactly it goes. So we're just the board, or the uh, state board of accounts, said we can just bring it back into the general fund. So those are the two additional appropriations. And on the rainy day fund, Dr. Deichel, if you do need to, I know you have the opportunity to appropriate appropriate it tonight if we vote in favor to do so. Mm -hmm. But before you would actually be able to move it and spend it, that would require another board vote, correct? correct. And then when we get our, when, I'm thinking positive, when we get our impact aid money, then can we put that back into the rainy day fund? With board approval, yes. Anything going in or out of the rainy day fund has to be board approved. Okay. All right. Does anyone from the public have a comment or a question? All right, at this time, then we will close the public hearing. We thank you all for attending. Thank you, Dr. Deichel. We'll go ahead and move right into our regular board meeting. If you would, please join us in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight we have an opportunity to recognize some mid-year retirees. That's always exciting. We have 21 total employees who will retire mid-year of the 2013 school year. Out of those 21 employees, they have a total of 596 years of service to Greater Clark County Schools. I will read the name of the employee and ask that as I say your name, that you come forward to be recognized. 
You also will receive shortly in the mail a lifetime pass which will enable you to attend any or all home Greater Clark events, ball games, plays, choral concerts, anything that you choose to attend. It's just our way of saying thank you for your service. So at this time, Dr. Mellon, we're going to start recognizing some folks. That's always fun. All right, first is Miss Roxy Abbott. Is she here tonight? Okay. Next is Dr. Milk Clayton. I know he's here. I saw him. <laughs> I see Miss Jeannie Deaton in the crowd. Brenda DeVerry. Tony Hall. Sharon Hostetler. Sharon here? No. Donald Hawkins. <laughs> Susan Humes. Patricia Kimberlin. Is Charles King here? Hey, Charles. Is Mark Lambert is here tonight? Nope. Okay. Phyllis Lowe. <laughs> Michael McNames. Pauline Miller. Diana Muller. <laughs> Travis Nay. Thomas Oakley. Billy Smith. It says William on here, but... <laughs> Patricia Stingle in the crowd? Is Miss Truy here? Barb Truy? Marvin Williams. Mr. Williams here. And Patricia Powers. I'll just um, say thank you again, and, and by the way, out of this motley crew up here, Dr. Clayton has the, the highest number of years of service with 40. So thank you all very much for your service. For you uh, wonderful retirees, if you choose to leave at this time, we completely uh -huh. understand.
belt and I'd run for the door. <laughs> With that, we'll move on to the approval of tonight's agenda. Dr. Mellon, do you have any changes that you that need to be made on your end? Oh, okay. I apologize. I missed the A schools. That's important business. All right. At the end of October, the Indiana Department of Education released the A to F accountability report cards for districts all across the state. The new A to F model for schools is figured based on performance, growth, and participation on the I Step Plus assessment. Performance factors include the percentage of students passing English and language arts and mathematics portions of the test. Growth is measured by the amount of academic process all students make from spring to spring assessment dates. Tonight, the board would like to salute our schools that received a grade of A based on last year's school data. The new grading system holds schools to a very high standard and our staff should be very, very proud of their accomplishments. Congr and what we're gonna do is call each school at once, have you come up because we have a plaque for you and then once you all sit down, then we'll call up the next school. We're going to start out with Jonathan Jennings. Maple.
Okay, now we will approve tonight's agenda. And and those of our staff, if you choose to leave, you are more than welcome to. <laughs> Whoever's left can move forward. <laughs> yeah. Wait for wait for Rusty to leave. <laughs> you gotta stay, Rusty. Terry's hanging out with us. Any adjustments to the agenda tonight, Dr. Mallon? No, ma'am. All right. I need a motion to approve tonight's agenda, please. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, Mr. Pavey. Thank you. Is there a second, Mr. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? And opposed? 6-1. Thank you. All right. Next, we'll approve minutes from previous meetings. Um, with the board's okay, we'll take all those at once. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Second? second. Thank you, Ms. Christensen. Any discussion on the minutes? All right. All in favor? All right. Thank you. Any public comments this evening, Renee? No. Yeah. All, right. All right. Next, we have tonight's consent agenda consisting of items one through five. Motion to approve. Thank you, Ms. Christensen. No second. Thank you, Mr. White. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Thank you. 7 0. Next, we have gifts to buildings. Mr. Satterley. Oh, well. Be quicker. <laughs> we always just like to point out what the community does for us. And I'm just going to point out a couple that really, I mean, ever you got it all across the district. But Alvaro Enter Enterprises gave $10,000 for the towards the tennis shelter. I think Lester always steps up. Portrait Gallery, New Washington Middle High, 1500 and Wigan Lumber, $3,000 for New Washington. And various donors for Charlestown High for 2200 Again, $18,000 this month. It's always something on here to talk about. So mm -hmm. without that, you know, a couple of these a month saves a job. So one way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the community. So would you like to move to approve Absolutely. those gifts, Mr. Satterley? Second, Mrs. Kraft. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Thank you. And next we'll move to action items. First one is approval of the 2013-14 school calendar. Board, a lot of work uh, has been done over the course of uh, uh, many months regarding the calendar for 2013-14, and it's what's called a balanced calendar, as you know. And what it does is it spreads the school year out, so it'll be a shorter um, a break during the summer. There is a two-week break after every nine-week grading period, but in the fall and in the spring, there's a one-week period of time in which we call an intercession, and we, we can provide additional uh, enrichment for our students and our school system. And um, so tonight, we'd like to, to bring that forward. Um, there are a couple of adjustments from the last board meeting when we first brought it out to your attention and to the public's attention. Number one, we had initially built in half days after at the end of each nine weeks for teachers to use to grade. They weren't there for uh, student use. The students were not going to be in attendance, but they were there for teachers because we want the teacher grades to be in and submitted at the end of the nine-week grading period. Uh, but after considerable discussion with our Teachers Association, it was decided that those days were not uh, necessary. So those days have been removed. It's, com it's changed the, uh, the uh, dates a little bit. Um, the second thing that we've done is we found just this evening uh, that we usually always take election day off for our students uh, because our, a lot of our schools are used as election sites. Well, in 2013, there will be no elections. So we did not catch that. The thought process that we would have is that November 11th is a Veterans Day, and uh, that might be a day worth considering. Now, what I might recommend, Board, is, is because instead of last minute, what I might recommend is that if you would give us, if you would approve the calendar as is with the idea that come the 18th of December, we'll come back with a final recommendation on what we'll do with that election day.
So if you wouldn't mind, I guess I would hope that you would approve the calendar tonight uh, with that one contingency. Is there a motion? Mrs. Kraft? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All right, 7 oh. Next we have a revision to policy 5121. Board, I, I think I'll have the uh, policy brought up here as soon as Renee has the opportunity to. No, she's doing well. Doing well. Multitasking. Uh, board, this is just a first reading, so there's no action needed at this time. But as part of our impact program, we, we really believe that communication from our teachers to our parents is critical. Uh, related to grades, it's very important that our teachers communicate any time a student might be failing a class, that that communication comes as early in a grading period as possible. But we have a policy in number five, it says in no case shall a student be issued a failing, it said semester grade. We believe that needs to at least say quarter grade uh, without at least one unsatisfactory progress report being sent home and personal contact made with the home. So we saw that in policy and we felt that again we're trying to get communication sooner than later and so for a first read we wanted to bring that to your attention and we'll bring it back to you for a second reading in January unless you have any questions about that policy. Is there a motion? Or we don't need a motion, sorry, first reading. Any discussion or questions? Uh, we probably should, should uh, acknowledge that Teresa and Tony are here, and as board policy says, they are allowed to participate in any of the discussions that we have. They're not allowed to vote, but they are allowed to participate in any discussions they've had, and they have uh, set in with a few odds and ends of different things that we've got going on. But at any time, if you guys have anything that you want to say, don't don't hesitate to uh, uh, get some sort of way of getting recognized and, and say what you need to say on this thing. And and, and that's one of the things that helps for a smooth transition is as they come in there. So uh, I did want to point out to uh, some of the audience members if they decide they want to say something so they don't think that, that they shouldn't be. But they're, they're uh, by board policy, they're more than uh, welcome to. And, and as the board here, I think, more than welcome to any comments that they have to say as well. I guess I still am not clear, and I still have a problem with a, a student who is attending class every day uh, receiving an F. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not sure that's completely the student's fault, mm -hmm. if that's the case. A, a semester, a whole semester, and if they haven't missed a day, and I have had people call me and that has happened. Mm -hmm. Do we need to look at that a little better? I think that, uh, first of all, you make a great point, and I would think that with our focus now on our impact program, where we're going to be evaluating that data on a really consistent basis and we're going to be asking questions of our teachers. Well, let, me just, let me just tell you one of the things that we do currently. We run a report after every grading period and it's, it's an F, it's a grade distribution report but we're looking at the percentage of Fs that are being given across our district. And based upon looking at the number or percentage of Fs, then we can break that down by school and by teacher. And what we believe is important is that we don't want to ever give a grade that's not earned. But when a student is getting an F or failing grade, it is our obligation as an entire school system, whenever that, is, uh, that student is first recognized with that grade, we must find out what can we do to help that child. Our goal is to help every child succeed. So the, the impact program is designed as soon as we see the data, then we need to intervene. And we have to contact the parent and get them part of the process as, a, as a, a support, part of our team, but we must be intervening for kids. Uh, if a student were to go through a whole quarter or a whole semester to earn an F grade, then there has to be, it won't be because we haven't done everything in our power as a classroom teacher and as a staff in our buildings to intervene on their behalf. Uh, they're gonna have to work awfully hard to get that F because we're, we're not going to stand for it. We're going to do everything in our power. So I agree 100% with you on that. Any other questions? All right. We'll move on to authorization to file for unclaimed property. Dr. Deichel 
came on board, and as you know, he, he, he leaves no stone unturned. <laughs> and we appreciate that. And uh, what we found is there's an unclaimed property division of the Indiana Office of the Attorney General. And there are three, there's a website, and there are three unpaid property claims on behalf of Greater Clark County Schools that total $736.04. So we want that money. And in order to seek payment uh, of these funds, the board has an affidavit that you authorize, um, and it must be approved and filed. And so the affidavit will give Dr. Deichel our CFO permission to seek payment of these claims. So, board, we're asking you uh, for approval of the affidavit that authorizes the filing of claims for unclaimed property owed to Greater Clark. Motion to approve. Ms. Christensen, thank you. Is there a second? Mr. White, any discussion? All in favor? Anytime you want to go get money, you're not going to have a problem. <laughs> 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 Additional appropriation. This is the pension refunding that we had the public hearing on. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Mr. Pavey, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Satterley, any other questions or discussion that has not already taken place? All right. All in favor? All right. 7 0. Tax anticipation warrants. At this time, I'll turn it over to Dr. Deichel. Once a year, we have to come before the board and ask permission to borrow money to operate our school system. What we're asking for now is uh, permission to borrow 4.1 million for the general fund, 1.8 million, well, 1 million 850 thousand for the transportation fund, and 2 million 50 thousand for capital projects. This money will be repaid back in December uh, by December 31st once we get our final tax draw. So it's something we normally do because we don't have a big cash balance to borrow the money ourselves or loan it to ourselves. Is there a motion? motion Mr. Sarah, thank you. Second? Mr. White, any discussion? All in favor? All right. Um, next we have the resolution on the rainy day and general fund appropriations, which we all had public hearing on. Is there a motion? Motion. Thank you. Mr. Satterley, is there a second? Second. Mr. Pavey, thank you. Any other questions or discussion? All right, all in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Oh, I apologize. Was that late, Mrs. Kraft, or is that a no? I didn't ask. I'm sorry. I, I thought I saw your hand. So let's do that one more time. All in favor? And opposed? Thank you. That's 6 1. All right. I apologize. Next is second reading on policy 5113, student attendance. I'll have Mr. Hare come up to present this. Yes, board, we presented uh, about a month ago the first reading on the high school attendance, and if you'll recall, uh, the major change is eliminating the no credit. We used to, students had to attend uh, so many days, and if they missed more than like 11 days, they had to make up the time. If not, we took their credit away. And um, based on case law, I shared with this with you last time, we feel like that was the uh, wrong thing to do and probably not the right thing to do for, for kids. So we've worked with this to principals at the high schools. Um, the only change that I did make to this was uh, kind of a suggestion Mr. Pavey had last time was to utilize school messenger as much as we can when it comes to student attendance. So be happy to entertain any questions. Is there a motion? Motion. Motion to approve, Mr. Pavey. Is there a second? <coughs> Mrs. Kraft, thank you. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Hare. The next one, yours too, Mr. Hare? I'll, I'll go. Yeah, we always need. We always need all of you sitting over there at that table. Never have a second thought there. But, board, this is another one of those uh, annual uh, re repeats, I guess, where we have a uh, trunked repeater lease from Radioland Incorporated, and we use three radios used by the attendance office, uh, school safety specialist, and our assistant superintendent. And they're used for communication purposes, especially when transporting students. And the system allows for all of our radio transmission to be recorded for security purposes. And these radios could also be used as backup communication in the event of an emergency. So we're, 
we're asking, uh, uh, recommending the approval of the trunk repeater lease from Radio Land Incorporated. Motion. Motion. Ms. Christensen, thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Sarah, thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? And none opposed? 7 0. All right. Are you Sutton? Board, last time I think we had the opportunity to bring this to your attention. Uh, again, what we're trying to do is we're looking at health care costs in our district. We're looking at the possibility of what's called an employee clinic or a corporation based clinic. A gentleman by the name of R.E. Sutton, Richard Sutton, uh, has probably implemented about 60 of these clinics in the state of Indiana. We're asking permission for him to come down and do a quick study. It's not a comprehensive study, but he would need to work with Pepper Cooper, our agent of record, uh, and review some data, and then make a recommendation to us as to the viability of a clinic for our school corporation. What would be the gains? What are the pros and the cons? And so. Uh, we are asking for your uh, approval to bring Richard Sutton down for $3,500. He'll uh, work and meet with Pepper Cooper as our insurance agent of record, review the appropriate data that he's, that's necessary, and then come back with a report to you, board, as to the viability of how a clinic could assist or benefit us in terms of reducing our health care costs. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Mr. Siley, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Pavey. Any discussion or questions on the clinic or the, I'm sorry, the, mis the Sutton contract? Is uh, he going to work with the insurance committee as well to do this, Pepper and the insurance committee? Yes. Who will have input into, the, into what's going on with this. And again, uh, the, you know, there's always a question about these types of things. It's, you know, we're rocking a hard place on all this stuff. Uh, I don't like spending $3,500, uh, but if the guy's got valuable, uh, abilities and skills, uh, sometimes you have to go outside and get them. And so uh, we hope that, uh, that this can work out. And like I said, we want to have input by the people who are involved in it as well, which would be Mr. Cooper and, of course, the insurance committee and some, you know, somebody, you or Tom or whoever is involved in that thing to, to, to try to get this thing going on. It's, it's a real big thing. Many people think of their doctors as part of their family. And so, you know, if we set up a, a, a clinic or something like that, there's going to be some people that are just going to be completely upset that, that that happens. But again, it maybe that's what we have to do because the amount of dollars involved in, in what's going on. But uh, I think you know by the time we get uh, uh, a good study, good information, good input from a lot of people that, would, that somebody will be able to make a good decision about it. Any other questions or discussion? Well, I would just like to say as a member of the Education Foundation that I had a hard time with this just because of <coughs> our um, cooperation from the local hospital and so I don't feel that I could support that tonight because part of uh, Dr. Dashner is still in my head saying we're not in the food service business we're not in the transportation business and I'm not really sure we need to be in the health clinic business so that's that's the reason I'm going to not support tonight. One thing too that just for your consideration is that what happens with a lot of these providers that come down and, and provide the, the clinic service is they enlist the support of local physicians and local hospitals. So it's not like they come in and bring people in from, they can't afford to do that. One of the cost savings is that they, they recruit physicians locally to come in and, and provide service to the clinic. So we would need uh, to have that kind of good relationship with our local providers. And the other thing, to, just to... Um, Mr. Gilbert's point, uh, with the, the um, ability to still go to your own family doctor for things, that, that's never taken away, but it is, a, it is more convenient for employees during the, the work day to get to the clinic, to get proper service, and to walk away without being billed anything. They don't have a copay, they don't have to pay for labs, they don't have to pay for um, any prescriptions, so there's a, that's where the cost savings comes to them. So just sinus infections or some, you know, uh, minor uh, issues that you would go to, if that's, that's the main uh, benefit to a clinic, just to give you more information. Uh, Dr. Mellon, how comprehensive will this review be that, you know, the, that he comes back with? I mean, is it going to talk about, you know, things like the cost savings, the startup cost? Um, is it going to talk about the organization, what it's going to look like? Um, what it looks like in other um, 
school systems. Um, I mean, I, I'm thinking $3,500. I'm not sure how comprehensive we get for $3,500, and so that's my only uh, concern is that are we going to have enough information to really make a good decision? Um, it, primarily around, um, you know, what are we getting for our investment? Yeah. Um, so. Uh, one of the things that uh, Richard Sutton has done is, um, in other school systems I've worked in, he's consulted in relationship to this clinic concept. And so I think you'll see it'll be very comprehensive um, uh, for the dollars. Um, it, it will be a comprehensive look, and, and he'll be able to provide some real detail. And the other thing that we'll be able to do is um, before a clinic, now keep in mind, He'll provide information that will talk about what is the financial impact of a clinic in terms of healthcare costs. Now, whether we implement a clinic or not, we need to go through another whole series of steps. We're going to have to be able to have the insurance committee on board, our teachers association, our other employee groups. There's going to be a lot more information that will have to, to come to the forefront. And one of the things that they'll do is they'll go to clinics around the state. In other districts I've been in, we sent teams out to these clinics so they could see how the clinics were working for themselves. So we'll get these representatives of our employee groups out there. So there'll be no doubt, if this won't be a top-down decision if we were to do a clinic. It's going to be going out and working with all of our employee groups and let them experience and see and talk to other employees from other school corporations. And that, that will drive whether we do a clinic or not. I guess I hope that that's, that's part of that process. Well, maybe I need to say a little bit different, but we're, we're going in with the initial investment. If we decide we want to go that way, is there going to be more cost to the consultant to tell us how to do that? I mean, in other words, you know, here's what it looks like, here's what we're anticipating, and if you want to take that to the next step where we implement the actual clinic, I mean, is there going to be a whole series of uh, consulting fees that are going to be necessary there? I don't anticipate that going into this, uh, based upon my past experience. It's not like we he pay we pay him thirty five hundred for this, and then oh by the way, now for step two we'll pay him another five thousand. Oh, and then by that's not how uh, I've operated with this gentleman in the past. Okay. So there shouldn't be any surprises. Okay. Thank you. Good question. Any other discussion? All right. All in favor? And opposed? So that's five two. Motion passes. Next is the LIPS program training. We're going to have our director of special services, Mrs. Schneff, come up and talk about the LIPS program training a little bit. Uh, hello. Um, I just want to talk a minute about the LIPS program. This is a phonemic awareness program. It is a program that we implemented two years ago with four of our speech therapists and really tried to see if we could help some of those kids in kindergarten and first grade who were really having difficulty learning to read because they lacked the phonemic awareness they needed in order to produce those sounds. Uh, we did that program for the last year and a half. We've had some success with it. And now we want to expand that into the opportunity to provide it in all of our elementary. So we actually have speech therapists and teachers coming from each of our elementary. We're going to train them and then let them implement it in, in within the district. It is a rather expensive program. Uh, it is three days of intensive training, um, and then the teachers will take it out into the, to the building. The cost of the program is going to be paid through federal dollars. Though. Any questions? Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Kraft? Is there a second? Mr. Satterley? Yes. <laughs> Any discussion or questions for Ann? All in favor? Yeah. Thank you. 7 0. Last is uh, IHCP Medicaid reimbursement revalidation. And this is just a federal regula regulation that requires us to revalidate our Medicaid status. Um, we do bill Medicaid with an outside um, agency, Go Solutions. They provide our Medicaid reimbursement, and for any student who is eligible for Medicaid, who get such services as speech, um, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and just recently transportation, we get some reimbursement back from the federal gov gov government. Um, in order to continue that, we must revalidate and have that done by January 1, and that requires your board support. Is there a motion? Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Is there a second? Mr. White, thank you. 
Any discussion or questions? All in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Thank you. Board reports. Mr. Gilbert, you got anything? No, ma'am. Ms. Christensen? No. Ms. White? No, thank you. Mrs. Kraft? Just one request. Do we have a date for graduation yet? Yes. We approved, uh, we approved, we approved those, those dates. That, might have been right. that may have been one of the. One right. Why don't we make sure we'll make sure that we'll make sure that Renee emails that to you tomorrow, Nancy. Travis, you don't have that on top of your head. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> They're a team. <laughs> and, and Teamwork. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to stand up for Travis there because I noticed you didn't say anything about being on the top of Mark's head either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And I don't know if there's anybody else out there, too. Uh, Gary yeah. Um, yeah. Green's back there as well. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Satterley, do you have a report or a request? No, nope, can't follow that. <laughs> Mr. Pate. Roger that. <laughs> All right. No public comments on non-agenda items, Renee? Okay. Next, we'll move on to board comments. Mr. Gilbert. Uh, thank you, everyone, for showing up. Uh, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that when Tom came on board was we thought, you know, how diligent he is. And here he's, you know, he's going, he's buying $700 here. And you think, well, that's not much, but it is. If we, you know, we have to do all these things and we're working really hard. Uh, you know the ideas of this clinic. I'm not sure that I'm in favor of that. I wasn't in, uh, when back when we went uh, uh, and we started our self insurance. Uh, wasn't wasn't in favor of that. Worried about it. Uh, it worked out well. Uh, you know uh, we made the decision, and this is the same thing. We're making the decision here to look at it, and you know somewhere along the line, the, uh, you, you guys will make the decision. Hey, this is it. Uh, we're going to try it, or you'll make a decision. No, we're not going to try it. Uh, but the only way you can find out is by going and getting information. So I'm, I'm very pleased that you know that we're moving forward on this, and we're getting an input, which is so important from uh, you know from from everyone that's involved in the thing. So I'm very, I'm very pleased on that thing. Uh, those people who retired, uh, you know, I knew I knew most of them, didn't know all of them. Uh, I assured them that uh, as I went through the uh, the thing, that 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 they're going to have a good time. And it's going to be enjoyable for them, uh, and uh, so uh, you know I'm very happy for all those people. I, and I noticed uh, another one that, that was on the uh, uh, on our list this time, uh, but who was not recognized, uh, who uh, has been uh, a, a very important uh, a mover for our Charlestown Auto Tech program, uh, and uh, will be missed. Uh, but we'll, somebody will be able to talk about him in the spring a little bit more. But I guess I should recognize Pat. Mm -hmm. uh, who has been a wonderful employee for a whole lot of years past. We'll make you a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Thank you. All right. If I think of anything else, I'll say. <laughs> no, you're done. Ms. Christensen. I'd just like to clarify <laughs> what I just said that I kept hearing Dr. Dasher and I had that we're not in the transportation or the food service business. But in, in my opinion, we were, and I always voted that way not having had a clinic or done something down this avenue before, I just wanted to clarify that I haven't changed my thinking, but that's what I kept hearing in my head. We are definitely not in that business, even though it may be the next board is going to be. So I just wanted to clarify that. And uh, just uh, Travis, it was wonderful to see Dr. Mellon, Travis, Sandy, Steve, all of you at the holiday parade. Amy, Amy I, did I see you, dear? I was so excited. Hi. Robert. Robert was there. Oh, Robert. Yeah. Uh, the largest elf I've ever seen. Just, just, <laughs> want, just wanted to mention that uh, your competition won again this year. We were so proud of our float with kids on it, too. Mm -hmm. But yours was wonderful with the Wilson students. <laughs> Mr. White? Just thank you all for coming. Mrs. Kraft? Yes, thank you.
Mr. Satterley? Just going to echo, thanks Pat, for all you've done. And I don't know if you know Pat well, because you haven't been here that long, mm -hmm. but as, if Pat leaves, I would I would suggest you sit down. He's got some su good suggestions on what we could improve, mm -hmm. that I think you got to be listened to before he, he leaves us. Because um, he's been telling us about them, and there's some we couldn't get done, there's some we could get done. But I think if you listen to him, we want to move forward a little keep that program going. Thank you, Pat. Mr. Pavey? Well, I want to echo what Mr. Satterley said. Pat, I, that program has been um, sort of something I've admired uh, from afar since I came on the board. I think as uh, when I first came on the board, I came down and I watched uh, what it has sort of rolled into. I mean, from the fact that he and his wife were down there painting the floor to make it look like a with the colors of all the different schools. He wanted to make sure nobody was left out, but uh, he's done a fabulous job down there, and whichever way you decide to go, Pat, we we very much appreciate your efforts down there. So, thank you. And I, I, I have to echo that. I was sad when I got your email, but at the same time, I understand there comes a time in all our lives where we all want to kick back a little, so I hope that you enjoy your years and we thank you for your service um thanks to teresa and tony for being here tonight it was good for you all to be in the executive session with us get your feet wet a little bit and donna thank you for giving me that paperwork that i was missing appreciate that and uh, i know dr mellon has some recognitions he'd like to make so i'll turn it over to him well first of all pat know that it just was a timing thing in terms of the recognition. We're going to recognize you more formally here uh, in the in the future. It was just more of a timing issue to make sure that we were prepared. Um, also, we have a meeting set up uh, already, I think, in later this month. So we'll sit down and visit a little bit because we do value the program and want the program to continue to move forward and benefit kids. So we'll look forward to sitting down and having that conversation. Um, we do have two people board that you've already approved uh, their employment, but they're both here this evening. Uh, the first is uh, Gary Green. Gary, uh, if you would, wouldn't mind standing. Gary, why don't you come on up? Come up here for a minute. Gary, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Marty liking the haircut. <laughs>
Last thing I would just say is, had the opportunity to attend uh, two um, student presentations this weekend uh, productions. One was Annie. Mm -hmm. um, it was there on Friday evening uh, when we had a little bit of a sprinkler head issue at the front of Jeff High. Uh, I want to thank not only the staff of um, in the, in the staff of Annie for what they did because. The students handled themselves extremely well. It came right at the very end of the production. They missed their opportunity to come out and, and take the, their final bows, but they did it outside. Uh, my, my son was there uh, and said that outside they sang uh, their, a last song, and um, the sun will come out tomorrow, which was appropriate. <laughs> and uh, they sang that song, and they were recognized. And so I was very proud of the students involved in the production as well as the staff. They handled themselves with class uh, related to the, the production itself in dealing with the after effects. But also there are a lot of unsung heroes that responded immediately to the situation at the front of Jeff High. And we had water, it was like Niagara Falls in the very front of the building because a sprinkler head that was uh, probably 20 feet up had, had broken and malfunctioned and so there was this, this steady stream of water that came flowing out of there for I don't know at least 20-25 minutes perhaps and the, the custodial staff that responded the other staff members who were present our maintenance uh, uh, crew that, that, that was there and responded uh, Harold Wolf and Steve Hopgood um, Gus Luckert uh, just tremendous I can cannot tell you that's that stuff that Kids came to school Monday morning in the staff, and other than having uh, some, what's the vinyl? Um, baseboard. baseboard, thank you. You can thank you, sir. <laughs> Tell you that I'm not in that business. Uh, it, was, it, it was like it never happened. So I just, I think there's a lot to be proud of there. And then also, I had the great opportunity to be, go up to New Washington, and they had a production of Bah Humbug. And uh, I think their Friday night, I wasn't there Friday, I was there Saturday, but Friday night may have been their biggest crowd uh, that they've had in a long time. And again, those kids, they're putting themselves out in front of people. They're, they're performing. I'm so proud anytime students are, are able to get out in front of people, whether it's uh, acting, it's, playing a, uh, it's singing a song, it is um, you know, playing an instrument, or it's per, uh, performing in some kind of athletic endeavor. Our kids are putting themselves out there and uh, I'm very, very proud of that. So it was a really good weekend from, from that perspective. That's enough for me. <laughs> I just want to add one comment before you ask for a journal. It was, it was great that Dr. Mellon came to New Washington, and I called the director to let her know because we're a long time friends as well. I said, hey, by the way, Dr. Mellon's coming with a couple of kids. Well, she got nervous, of course, and she told the kids, and then I, all I heard was, why did you have to tell us? <laughs> but I think they did a great job. <laughs> and with that, we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Ms. Christensen, thank you. Mr. Satterley, did I see a second? All in favor? Good night. <laughs>